It was my own lovely lady, and she said, oh, it's you. And we laughed for a moment, and I said, I never knew. Do you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain? And the feel of the ocean and the taste of champagne? If you like making love at midnight in the dunes on the Cape, you're the lady I've looked for. Come with me and escape. Isn't it amazing how well known and popular that song still is? Especially considering the storyline of the lyrics. Two people in a relationship decide to cheat on each other because they have no idea how much they have in common. How's that even possible? How do they not know? How does this? turn into this. We are always communicating something. Communication is when a sender transmits a message to a receiver, which seems pretty simple. We know that communication is core to connection. We know it helps build intimacy, emotional bonding, sexual attraction, and trust. We know that lack of communication creates feelings of isolation and rejection. And those things negatively impact our sexual health. When was the last time you felt sexy and unappreciated? Exactly. We also know that our sexual connections and health impact our emotional and physical well-being. Exercise gives us endorphins. Endorphins make us happy. Happy people don't kill their husbands, they just don't. We also know that our emotional well-being affects our financial situation. Raise your hand if you've ever bought something you didn't need because you were mad or sad. Yeah, Ben and Jerry's, we all know. <laughs> so if we know all of these things are connected, why are we messing up our communications so badly that our relationships look like this? I, I can't actually do that. But. <laughs> we forget that we are always communicating something. Even though we hear it all the time in things like, do as I say, not as I do, or actions speak louder than words. Now, I don't want you to confuse the concept that actions are just in the literal sense. The statistic that 93% of our communication is nonverbal is actually misrepresented. Yes, it helps you understand my words, but here's the reality. No matter how many gestures I use as I jump around the stage, you're never going to understand my message as well as if I use words, no matter how amusing it might be to watch. So if our words are also actions, then the core becomes intentional communication. Am I intentionally communicating to you what I mean to? Let's take a look at the roles of the people in the communication process and how intentional communication makes a difference. The speaker seems to have it easy. Create and transmit a message. But if I'm the sender, I'm initiating the process, which means I decide the level of the message. I have to make a conscious decision that a deeper, more meaningful message is worth transmitting. Then I have to actually communicate that to you. Now, I'm not saying that only deep philosophical debates are worth discussing. Back to our pina colada song, the couple forgot to value the little things. My likes, dislikes, and opinions directly impact the depth and longevity of our relationship. But I have to communicate that to you so that you will also value it. And then part of that is overcoming my fears 
of transmitting it to you. So what if I want to bring up an idea that's taboo? That can be pretty scary in our sex-negative society. I have to actually communicate to you that my physical desires are worth talking about. <clears throat> Fear really plays a part in our deciding what we're going to say to people. But if I take time to practice the message and look at the values, that will help me understand the value myself, and it will also help me avoid communications like this. Baby, would you ever um, want to try um, butt sex? I, I don't know, honey, if you really wanted to. Only if you want to, then all right. Okay, turn around. <laughs> I, I don't think that's what he meant. <laughs> then I have to actually transmit the message to you. It doesn't matter how open you are or how concise the message is if I never actually broach the subject. But really, in the grand scheme of things, the sender has it easy. Once I bring up the subject, I mean, it might be scary to bring my sexual fantasies to light and it might be nerve-wracking to wait for your response, but after that, my job is done. And now the pressure is on you as the listener. And here's where it's gonna sound harsh. I'm not gonna sugarcoat and I'm not gonna use cute metaphors. The reality is that sexual discussions don't need more metaphors. We need less ambiguity and more specific focused language. We need to eliminate fear and shame by empowering the words. And besides, who really understands that baseball metaphor? As the sender, now the pressure's on you because you are always communicating something. So your reactions will make or break all future communications. If you shut me down verbally or non-verbally, you tell me that my value is nothing to you. As the pressure is on you, because your reactions will make or break our communications, it's really important to remember that I need to know that you're listening to what I have to say, even if you don't like it. And that's hard to do. But if you are an intentional listener, I will reciprocate. I can see you out there saying, well, my partner doesn't do that for me. Please remember, somebody needs to take the first step, even if it's for the second or the third time. Decide that your relationship and you are worth it. I know some of you out there think I'm being fatalistic and unfair. Some of you were uncomfortable the minute I said sexual fantasies. Some of you want to run me over with your car. And that's okay. I get it. I know that talking about your sexual desires is difficult. It doesn't come easy from everyone. But understand, I genuinely want you to have deep, meaningful conversations so that you can enjoy wonderfully fulfilling physical relationships. Part of that is being an intentional communicator. Love may not be all we need, but we do need it. And that is key. So remember to be intentional communicators so that you can enjoy years of pina coladas <laughs> and making love on the cape.